What's up, guys? So, Micah Roberts here, bringing you content on, well, me, because I don't know what I want to produce yet. Follow me through my journey as I discover who I am. Okay, so I would like to discuss with you guys my life story for a bit. To give some context to the channel and uh, who I am, I guess this is part one. It's a rainy day outside today. So, let's begin with the beginning, I guess. First off, I thought photography was a joke way back in the day. I, like, kind of criticized my sister for doing a photography class and I think my biggest complaint and this is one of those things that's like written into my soul is that I didn't understand it I really didn't but here's a funny thing about things I don't understand I have a tendency to latch on to them latch on to things I don't understand until I do understand them right as I was going into my senior year I saw a video of Devin Supertramp no, 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 I saw, I saw a Lindsey Sterling video filmed by Devin Supertramp. And so I looked up this Devin Supertramp and I saw his uh, bridge swinging video, like, link in the description. And I was like, I was shocked. It was so cool, amazing. It was probably the coolest thing I had ever seen. And it was GoPros and wide lenses and the cool music. Well, I don't know, it was amazing. It just sang to me. So right after high school ended, I kind of nurtured these desires to like film something throughout that year. And then as high school ended, I was like, I'm gonna get a camera. So on Black Friday, I went and bought myself a Canon T5. Kind of a mistake if you ask me. I didn't realize the difference between T5 and T5i models, the regular Re Canon Rebel models and the I models, it made it impossible for me to add a mic to the top of my camera. I started taking pictures and uh, my dad bought me a course on photography from Great Courses and I sort of watched it, sort of, and then photos left and right to understand. Photography was one of those things. I knew what a good picture looked like because, you know, wow, that's a great looking picture didn't know why though. Why is it a good looking picture? I couldn't say. I was, this whole rule of thirds thing didn't make sense to me. Uh, composition and all its different lingo didn't make sense to me. <clears throat> the colors. And as I started thinking and learning and hearing the lingo, it all started to click. And it started to become less of a phenomenon or a, uh, a mystery, a magic, and it became more science, nearly. It became something that I could do something with. Like, I could make a good picture. I could make one because I knew how. I knew how to do it. I knew what the rules were. I knew what made a good picture a good picture. And this is one of the funny things about photography and like I guess the arts in general is that the reason why it's an art is because it's such a mystery and this is what keeps me engaged in photography is that yes that picture is a good picture and yes there is a reason why it is a good picture so I'm constantly thinking and the more I thought about this this is kind of where I I saw video as my real reason for engaging in photography and film. When I saw YouTube, I realized that that content was possible. 
Because, you know, you see stuff on TV and you're like, oh, it's basically magic in your brain. Your brain doesn't think, oh, I know exactly how that was created. No, it doesn't, it doesn't think that. You're not thinking about, oh, I know what kind of lens they used for that. When somebody holds a GoPro, they're simply holding a GoPro. And it's easy to understand. When somebody is vlogging, the camera's right in there in their hand. There's no mystery about it. And so I like that. I like being able to understand it. That's why I like YouTube, uh, because it's so close to the viewer. It feels like the viewer's right there behind the lens. And there's not multiple cameras. There isn't, anyway, I can go on. So when I saw that first video, of Lindsey Sterling, I was like, this is something magical. This is amazing. I really, really want to learn how to do that. The moving shots that Devin Supertramp would do were incredible. It just, it seemed impossible to get such smooth camera work. And the moving camera is really what, like, you know, the shiny thing that caught my eye. Because uh, you often don't see moving camera work in a lot of, a lot of productions. Or if you do see it, it seems very perfect. Uh, especially in, like, movies, because they do it over a million times until they get it right. It was really something to see Devin Supertramp create something uh, like his rope swing video or the content he created with NC Sterling. I think also the really wide lens, that was something really cool too. Ah, okay, let me do an overview. So the overview of the story, I started liking film in high school. Got a camera, started making my way into college via the Pathway program. Broke my leg, started working in the news industry, started trying to do stuff with my camera again. The main struggle I found is that I didn't have people to do anything with, and there was nobody in my town to teach me about filming or anything. And I guess that's, that's a common story. It's the same way, I guess, for most programmers, or there's no one to teach you. You just have to figure it out. You just have to go and do. But I didn't do a lot of doing until now. So here I am. Next, stopped working at the news station. Actually, it's KOMU in Jefferson City, or in Columbia, Missouri. I worked for them for nearly a year, from February to December. And then I went out to BYUI in January. I started school. And I didn't study film. They don't really have a film program, arts program out there but they do have video production. But I wasn't studying that. I was trying to study mechanical engineering. And my mechanical engineering thing was sort of going okay until I took on too many classes in my second semester. And uh, I'll get more into the details later. But my second semester, I switched to communications video production all the way. My T5 was stolen that year I was working in the news industry. Which was really sad. I had invested in a couple lenses. All my equipment was gone. I came back during the off track because that's how things work at BYUI. You get two tracks on and one track off. After two semesters, I was on my off track, which is fall. And uh, oh, another important thing is that I started a, a, a film group, as I call it. You know what? This isn't properly exposed. So I started a group at BYUI, I, a couple groups. Um, it went from this personal group I started with people in my, my apartment, and that failed. I went to an audition for another group on campus. They didn't let me in, even though I was the only applicant. Uh, <laughs> and they said they wanted to do more film stuff. And uh, let's see, then I, then I tried doing another group on campus called I Laugh. And so instead I went to another group called I Laugh and that group died, sadly. Uh, I think the direction of that group wasn't very clear. And then that was all first semester and then second semester, I decided I was going to start my own dang group because I was sick and tired of trying to find all these film people, these film nerds out there. I don't know where they're at. They're somewhere. So I was gonna find, I was gonna make a place where they could come to me. I didn't have to search for them. 
incidentally, I mean, of course, I search for them anyway because that's part of my nature. It's part of my 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 code written upon my soul. I I started a group called Film Photography. Very bland name, but it gets the point across very simply for anybody who glances at it who is interested in either one of those things will be inclined to join it. Hence why I chose the name. It's not flashy, straight to the point. I think you'll find that's the way I like to do things. So, sorry, this flip out screen is super distracting. Okay, so I started this group uh, through the school because I learned that doing it on my own wouldn't work. And, and then right after starting it, I didn't have any members, and my first meeting was coming up, and I needed to get people real quick, real quick. So I stood up in my communications, introduction communications class, and shouted out that if anybody wanted to join a film, or a film and photography society, they should come talk to me. And, you know, it works. <laughs> it worked. People came. And first meeting, there were two people showed up. Actually, I'm getting into the details a bit too much. Two people, okay, I'll finish the story. Two people showed up. There, uh, this one girl, I, uh, and then Isabel. Two people showed up. Two girls showed up. Both of them had no idea about anything concerning film or cameras or anything, which I'm totally, I was totally fine with. But one girl left, one remained. And so for three hours, <laughs> I lectured on exposure, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And I was talking about it, and I just couldn't stop. And this girl absorbed it all, sort of. She tried. And so we went out into the hall, and I was talking about the pictures. I was asking her to explain it to me and everything. Her name was Isabel, and she became one of the most solid members of the group like vital too for me because uh, I needed somebody who could help me organize it. Isabel was so willing to like learn that I could focus because I had her to take most of the organizing responsibilities. Man, I just could not praise Isabel enough. But yeah, that's a bit, that's, I'll tell, I'll talk more about that, about the, that experience. But the semester ended and we produced a couple videos and I came back to Jefferson City in Missouri. And my dad says to me, hey Micah, um, if you're serious about doing this film thing, then you should consider doing an internship <coughs> at a production company. And I found this one called Cool Fire. It's up in St. Louis. Really don't know what they do, but here it is. I was like, Cool Fire. He like showed me their website, which is pretty dang cool. Fire. <laughs> But uh, I was like, I haven't done anything. So I sent in an application at 2 in the morning. They replied the very next morning at 11, which means they're dead serious about having interns. So I was super excited. I had an interview. That was like on Tuesday. We set up an interview for that Friday. So Friday, I drove up. Oh, man, holding this thing is so hard. It's really heavy. So I drove up two and a half hours to St. Louis to have my interview, right? And I received an opportunity to have my internship at Cool Fire. Pretty dang cool. It was fire. <laughs> my family then went on a vacation. When we got back, uh, well, here we are now. <laughs>